This video is sponsored by Misty Mountain Gaming. You can find out more about them later in the video. If I had to pinpoint my favorite discovery since getting into tabletop games, it would have to be solo RPGs. Sitting down to immerse yourself in a game, completely following your own intuition, your own curiosities, and getting into deep thoughts and feelings is something truly special. And if you haven't played one, I know that can sound a little pretentious, but it's the same kind of magic any tabletop brings. It's an experience you can't get anywhere else. So if you're looking to start your journey into the world of solo RPGs or want to discover new stories to tell, well, I'm here to hopefully convince you to keep playing and keep writing with a different selection of 15 wonderful games. There are so many amazing ones to pick from and I've spoken about some great ones in other videos on the channel already, so treat this video as merely a taste of what's out there. But to start filling your journal, I'm Maddie from Dicebreaker, and these are 15 solo RPGs to play in 2023. creator of solo witchy journaling game Apothecaria comes a new experience to let you go beyond your small village by turning into a cute creature helping other critters across the Scottish Highlands. In Apothecaria, you play as a beast, from a beaver or fox to bat or frog, taking on the role of a poultice pounder. This is someone with a deep understanding of the natural world and how it can be used and transformed to help others. Throughout the game, you explore different regions of the world, foraging and bartering for goods to supply your stores along the way, and most importantly, identifying ailments in those you meet and brewing cures for them. All of these aspects have interesting game mechanics behind them to explore too. You can only collect certain ingredients during certain seasons, and your inventory can only hold so much, forcing you to streamline what tools and items you carry along your journey. So be cautious on your travels, things might go wrong, but don't forget to enjoy your time venturing through the natural wilds. Always take time to stop and smell the roses. Who knows, they could be your next cure. Be Like a Crow is exactly what it sounds like. You get to be a feisty little corvid doing avian things. Or more accurately, I guess, you get to pick one of four birds from the family to live out your birdie business. You spend your time in four modes of play, across exploring the world, both natural and human, socialising with other feathered friends, and sometimes, if you're not careful, in a spot of combat. However, all of this doesn't have to be in our world. You could be a magpie in a high fantasy, soaring amongst gods and monsters, a jackdaw in a graveyard befriending vampires and ghosts. Boss, steampunk, cyberpunk, and every other punk where you might want to be a little crow. The main driver behind your play as you explore these places are a deck of cards. The random pulls determine all sorts of different events, which you then journal in a notebook to track your little bird's progress. Being a bird does sound like it could be a silly concept, but there is actually a lot to dig into here. Putting yourself in this different perspective offers a whole new way to look at the world, and you might leave the game with a little more respect and understanding of all the birds you see every single day. A year on, you're still pining after your time in Elden Ring, wanting to dive back into tough combat, a grim fantasy world, and overwhelming boss fights, then why not pick up a notebook and try Rune? It's an RPG made to replicate the feeling of being in a Souls game, and that does involve punishing combat. Fights are something on the rarer side in solo games, but designer Spencer Campbell is known for translating action-filled video games into tabletop experiences, and Rune is no different. 
As a player, you split your time between two modes. Exploration sees you traverse new regions, discovering the ruins and secrets each one holds before you get into combat. Your steel hitting steel and tense blows are played out across a 4x4 grid where you roll to determine what an enemy does on a given turn and react accordingly. Rune is a delightfully crunchy solo RPG where you really get to test the gear you collect and the techniques you master along the way. So journey into the world of Oberon and see if you can survive. If your idea of a perfect afternoon when sitting down with a solo game involves brewing a large mug of tea, then let me introduce you to the perfect RPG. Last Tea Shop is a journaling game in which you give visitors a last rest point before passing into the great beyond. You pour them a drink, then sit down to discover who they were, learning about their life, sharing in memories, and helping them to prepare for the journey to the other side. Last Tea Shop started as a one-page RPG, but has grown into a longer game with the complete edition that provides new tea ingredients to brew the perfect concoctions. It provides new settings, all sorts of visitors, and more secrets for you to uncover. You greet each visitor that arrives and ask a series of questions to learn more about who they are, either using the ones suggested in the book or delving into your own ideas. It's a quiet, meditative game for when you want to explore characters rather than the world. And the classic version is even pay what you want so you can try it out before you settle into your bigger, comfier tea shop with the complete edition. In this solar punk style game, you work as a dowser, someone on a mission to rescue dragon eggs, and if you're lucky, hatch them into beings that can save the kingdom. Your world is one that turned against dragons long ago, using their eggs to power machines of war, but there is another way. In Dragon Dowser, you explore the world through a deck of cards, journaling your progress from one side to the other using prompts you encounter. From war machines causing chaos to helping local communities, your quest will take you through peace and action until you find your hidden ace among the cards, which represents your precious egg. The game has a ton of different prompts to play through and is an especially great start for any new players, as every single one has wonderful flavour text to set the scene for you if you need any extra guidance. Dragon Dowser is reminiscent of a Studio Ghibli story, fighting for nature amongst destructive humanity. So if you want to play out your very own stunning story, grab your cards and start dowsing. Speaking of Studio Ghibli stories, if Kiki's Delivery Service is your favourite film, then let me introduce you to your new favourite game. Koriko is all about creating a witch, then sending them off for a year to settle into a new town and hone their skills. Over the year, you'll befriend residents, get to know the town, work with your witchy mentor and, of course, make plenty of mistakes along the way. Kuriko uses the Dice Tower method to track your risky choices, which eventually will lead to failure as they tumble, but that is exactly what this journey is all about. Growing and learning, becoming the witch you want to be. The prompts are a wonderful collection of ideas that you generate through tarot cards, taking you from helping a local artist all the way to dealing with dangerous magical artifacts. As you draw tarot cards to play, the act itself feels magical, making the whole experience feel like you're a real-life witch when you play. Plus, the book itself is peppered with gorgeous art in sunset palettes, quotes from Hayao Miyazaki, and songs to inspire you. So, Kuriko is a delight to read through and even more fun to play through.
If your favourite part of Star Wars is when they end up on some backwater planet, when you get to see the underbelly of the sci-fi societies, and specifically anything with Boba Fett or Bosk, then grab your laser weapon and get ready to play Notorious. This is a solo game about becoming a nomad, a notorious bounty hunter who wanders the galaxy, cashing in contracts amidst an intergalactic war. You pick from various character options like the cocky scoundrel or fearsome brute, gaining different selections of weapons, backstory, and dealing with your scars, things both physical and otherwise, that define your look and have pushed you to where you are today. Plus, of course, you can pick a species, because what's the point of playing a fun sci-fi game if you don't get to be a weird little alien guy? From where, you can build out a contract, create planets to visit, and of course, hunt down your target. Whether you threaten your way to the mark or help locals to help yourself, once you find them, a fight might ensue. Your guild code might be broken, but no matter what, you have to bring them in. Notorious captures the feel of bounty hunters from your favourite sci-fi media perfectly, even providing a table of really cool showdowns at the end of your search. So if you want to don a helmet and pick up a blaster, then this is your chance. Like me, you spend 90% of your time daydreaming about running away to open a bookshop, then I found the game for you. Fox Curio's floating bookshop lets you do just that. You play as a little creature. I chose a harvest mouse with a wide-brimmed straw hat, because of course I would, and you take over a barge full of books, hoping to bring them to river folk across the land. Your game takes you across different seasons, each full of changes, traditions, and of course, wonderful festivals. There's a ton of creativity to be had, as not only do you follow story prompts of your daily book sales, you can grow hearts with different creatures you meet, learn recipes and buy ingredients to cook them, repair your boat, and even do a spot of fishing on a quiet afternoon. For a cute and cosy adventure, there are a ton of fun mechanics at play here, meaning you'll have hours to while away dreaming of your perfect life in the bookshop. It's basically like an amazing life sim game, but with the freedom of an RPG. So Stardew Valley fans, take note, this is your next obsession. When you're playing a solo RPG, you're taking time to be quiet and peaceful away from other people, enjoying a meditative experience all for yourself. So why not enjoy a game that really celebrates that? Alone on a Journey is a collection of games about being a solo traveler in the world. One sees you explore the stars, hopping from planet to planet, recording what you discover in the ship's log, from mysterious obelisks to new species. Another takes you into the different districts of an ancient city, from a bustling market to stunning bronze sculptures. And the last sees you explore a deep forest, finding everything from a lost pair of shoes to monstrous fungi and rusted weapons hidden within. The games are simple, sparking your imagination and letting your mind wander for a while. It's the perfect way to pass an hour or more, and you can even get Alone Among the Stars as Pay What You Want on Itch to start your journey. Or you can follow the rules in the back of the book to hack your own versions and explore an entirely new world. spoken a lot about games to play if you love certain movies so far in this video, and the theme continues, but this time with a game officially created for The Lord of the Rings. The One Ring RPG is a gorgeous book that invites you to adventure through Middle-earth, creating your own epic tales of triumph over evil. And good news for solo gamers, Publishers Free League have now released Strider Mode, a rule set that allows you to adapt the RPG to a single player experience. Inspired by the original Strider, Aragorn, you too can set off on adventures like him, using a series of tables to fill in the blanks where a GM normally would. 
This supplement has tweaks to everything from character creation to give you a little more help without a fellowship to back you up, sets up quests for you to follow from various beloved patrons like Tom Bombadil and Gandalf, and helps generate what the evil forces get up to as the eye's power grows ever stronger. Overall, it seems like a pretty simple way to adapt the Berk to Suit solo play, giving you the chance to venture off into Middle-earth to tell your own tale of daring deeds against Sauron. One ring not included. <laughs> It's time to chat about our wonderful sponsor for this video. Misty Mountain Gaming create RPG accessories and dice for D&D and beyond. You could pick up a leather bound journal for planning a campaign or a class pin to share your love of spellcasting and fighting with the world. Or you can find the perfect set of dice for your next game, from metal to glass to gemstone sets in every colour and all sorts of styles. My personal favourite are the Spellcaster glass dice. Just look at all those details. Head over to mistymountaingaming.com or follow the link in the description to pick up your own set right now. Now, if you're looking for something very different in your solo games, let me introduce you to The Sticker Game. This solo RPG combines audio drama with your own sticker collection to explore multiple realities. Inspired by the likes of Portal and The Stanley Parable, you're playing as a subject in a scientific experiment, working with a guide to connect to another you. Ah, there we go. I can finally see your journal, and I can see you across all worlds and known universes. To do this, you place stickers, calibrating with the other universes and keeping track of which you is the real you. Because this experiment can go wrong, the guide constantly hints to serious consequences as you play, and not to spoil the game, but things do get a little off track. Hey, uh, Offix, how are things looking on your end? Do you still feel connected? The game is played by listening to basically what is an audio drama that has music, sound effects, and fantastic voice acting to bring the whole experience to life. It's totally unique and provides a very different game to the other journaling RPGs you might be used to. And it's finally a chance to use all of those stickers you've been hoarding for years. I know, it's tough, but come on, it's for science. Now on to something on the spookier side with horror RPG Dwelling. Throughout the game you explore a haunted house, but unlike solely using prompts to tell the story, you're already immersed in one as you read. Dwelling is a tale that you intertwine with. As the story unfolds, there are bold words to pick out that are your chance to interact, whether that's offering a memory, leaving a mark on your skin from a contact with a ghost, or even summoning them into the very pages of the game where you doodle spectres in the book, deciding how they manifest. The RPG sketches out the rooms you explore, leaving space to fill in your ghostly findings like under the stairs, behind a TV, or on an empty chair where a dark, looming presence lingers, just waiting for your pen to bring them to life on the page. Dwelling is definitely a horror game. It doesn't list out horrible things, but there are certainly some scary moments, so check the content warnings at the back of the book before you play if you feel like it. Dwelling itself is like stepping into a horror movie, watching the plot unfold around you and knowing you can't help but go down to the basement. So if you want to hold up in the dark, playing through something haunting and wonderful, Dwelling is lingering in a dark corner just waiting for you. Do you want to head off on a fantasy adventure? One that takes you through an exciting, unique world and allows you to pick a distinctive class? Well, grab your backpack and get ready to play Colossal. This solo RPG is set within a castle so vast entire mountains and oceans fit in rooms. 
The walls stretch into the clouds so high the ceilings aren't visible. And among them, people have made homes, built towns and even cities. However, humans aren't alone. There are also rooks great hulking stone constructs that wander the world, sometimes battling people but also providing a source of technology that your chosen class can utilise. You venture out into the world using a deck of cards to discover what you experience on your way and journey your quest. And Colossal has been so popular that it now has expansions to explore too. From jobs to add more mechanics to detailed settings within the castle, as well as secrets to discover as you progress in the base game, maybe even taking you up to the battlements or into the deep dungeons. There's a ton to explore with Colossal and lots of lovely art to inspire you on the way. What you might not realise is that a simple deck of cards can actually transform into a way to summon demons if you're careful, or well, if you're not careful. Through Wreck This Deck, you play as a deck runner, using cards to tap into dangerous magic. You can peek into the future, change the world through ritual spells, and even trap some deadly demons, tapping into their immense power to boost your own. The purpose of your game is to try and stand up to the corruption in the world, turning to dark forces as a last resort to fight back. You lay out spreads of cards to divine information, working out when an ending is on the horizon or if someone tried to attack you magically from afar. Then you do rituals with them to extend your senses through the world and protect or harm so maybe stopping a flood, strengthening a stronghold, or something else. Whatever you need to do. Then of course come the demons. This is where you get to be really creative. You can start ripping cards, drawing on them, burning of them, all in aid of summoning different demons to use their power and further your own. Wreck This Deck is a solo RPG that feels more like a LARP as you recite things out loud and get physical with your cards. You can go as hard into the game as you like. So if you've been looking to step beyond your journal and try something totally new, this could be the deck for you. Iron Sworn is a solo RPG that allows you to play through D&D style epic adventures all by yourself, but it's now moved into sci-fi territory with Starforged. The galaxy is made up of a swirling nebula, interspersed with unpredictable storms, ravaged by pirates and bandits, but also home to your people's new colony, full of ancient civilizations to pick through and peace to keep between factions. You play as a hero sworn to an oath amongst all of this, picking their way through space on various quests, fighting for what matters most, and building trust with those you meet along the way. Starforged allows for vast adventures inspired by the likes of The Mandalorian and Firefly, completely solo, but you can also expand it to include other players if you want, maybe getting help on a specific quest or picking up a hitchhiker in your spaceship for a time. The Iron Swan system provides a great set of oracles to guide your play, providing inspiration for aliens, civilizations, complications, and more. It's your chance to explore a galaxy far, far away and beyond without the need of a GM to guide you. So those were 15 RPGs to enjoy alone. What games have you been playing solo? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed, please give this video a like. For more on RPGs, board games and beyond, subscribe to the Dicebreaker channel where we put out new videos every single week. You can also head over to dicebreaker.com where we cover daily news and insights into everything about the tabletop world. And it's also where you can become a part of Dicebreaker membership program, where you get discount on things to tickets like packs and Comic-Con, codes to use at local game stores, as well as lots of cool free content. And if you sign up for a year, you get an entirely free ball game. What's not to love? Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until then, I hope you have a lovely day.